for new birth video announcements. Hey, did you miss it? It was three exciting nights. We went from pandemic to pandemonium. If you want to replay all the exciting moments or you just missed it all, right now you can get a copy of the entire CD series from the Call to Conquer bookstore. And that's not all at Call to Conquer. Pick up a new birth mask, Kente t-shirt, and the August book of the month. By God's grace, our King's Table continues to feed our community. If you or anyone you know is in need of food, we've got just what you need. Stop by each Saturday from 10 a.m. until 12 p.m. It's free groceries and everyone is welcome. Just pull up at the Bell Family Life Center for free groceries. Oh, and our back-to-school drive-up has been postponed. Stay tuned for more details. Please keep our students, teachers, and administrators in prayer. And it's that time again, sabbatical. That's right, no church activities from Sunday, August 2nd through Saturday, August 15th. And this includes King's Table, but it does not affect Sunday worship or group therapy. Take some time and spend with your family, and it's a great time to catch up on some reading. This has been your video announcements. What's good? It's your boy KO, and this is Millennial Media. And right now, I want to take the time to welcome you in the service, all right? So gather your family, tell your friends about the link, because our pastor, Pastor Jamal Bryant, wants to put that spiritual battery in your back to strengthen your walk with God. And also, make sure you use the hashtag, New Birth Now, because you already know what time it is. New Birth is about to go live. Yeah. 
Good morning, everyone. My name is Pamela Booker. I've been a member of New Birth for a little over a year, and now is the time to pass the peace. Text five to ten people to let them know that New Birth is on right now. Now is the time to pass the peace. Keep your promise. 
what the Lord has already said about you. Just one time, everybody say, I say it. Yes. You want to say it? Yes. I agree. Because I am what you say I am. I am what you say I am. This is the day the Lord has made. We are rejoicing and we're glad in it. I pray that you've been blessed by this virtual worship encounter. Every week, God has met us in unique and significant ways. How my heart is overjoyed that we could have a sharing with us in worship. Chan Lamore, one of the emerging voices in the body of Christ, who knows how to hearken in the presence of the Holy Spirit. For the last couple of weeks, we have uh, been preaching about adjust, making the necessary adjustments in these unprecedented times. Today is the last installment of that series. To that end, I want to invite you to go with me to uh, the book that is the headquarters of the Holy Ghost, the book of Acts chapter 5. Acts chapter 5, verse number 15 people started bringing the sick into the streets, laid them on beds, so that at least when Peter's shadow fell on them, they would get healed as he passed by. That's Acts chapter 5, verse number 15. People started bringing the sick into the streets and laying the beds and mats so that at least when Peter's shadow passed by, they would get healed. I want to preach for just a little while today using as a subject, I can't wait for Groundhog's Day. I can't wait for Groundhog's Day. I've had several friends who live fast-paced lives, hospitalized over the years due to dehydration. But never once have I met anyone who was clinically diagnosed for being touch starved. To be honest, I've never heard of it or its aliases, which is skin hunger or touch deprivation. We are actually wired and designed to be touched. In France, the romantic capital of the world, cases are few and far between. But here in America, there's been such a surge of those who have been diagnosed clinically with touch deprivation because of COVID-19. The touch is not necessarily in the realm of that which is sensual, but it is, in fact, within the auspice of that which is sensible. So needing touch doesn't necessarily mean that, that I need to be hugged, held, or caressed, but just having my hand held, just having somebody affirm and shake my hand. Contact is necessary for mental, physical, and emotional health. I didn't know it, but I wanted you to be aware that touch reduces stress. Touch builds up the immune system. Touch calms bodily functions such as heart rate and blood pressure. 
touch, hear this, attacks loneliness. It reduces feelings of societal exclusion. Without touch, you feel overwhelmingly lonely. Without being touched, you feel anxious. You feel stressed. You feel depressed. And you feel sleepless. The telltale sign that a relationship is coming to an end when you can hear the wife, the girlfriend, the significant other exclaim, he barely touches me. Because it is evidence that there is now a disconnect. The issue is exacerbated now due to what we were introduced to 18 weeks ago, the terminology of social distancing. And the question that I had to uh, ask you this Sunday morning is, can the Lord still heal? Can he set free? Can he deliver, here's the catch, without touching you? A lot of apostolic and Pentecostal churches are finding themselves in a quandary because of social distancing. Can I still lay hands? Can I still work the altar? If I'm precluded from touching, I want to tell you resolutely that God's power is not limited to proximity. There was a centurion man in Matthew chapter 8 who had a maid that was sick. And he ran up on Jesus without a uh, appointment and says, I've got somebody on my staff who has fallen deathly ill. And Jesus volunteered to come to the house. And the man responded back to our loving Lord and Savior and said, I am a man who is under authority. Therefore, I know how power works without proximity. All I need you to do is just send the word. And if you send the word, the person who is working for me, the person who is in my house will get healed. The Bible gives us enough evidence in Matthew uh, Gospel of chapter 8 that that housemaid was healed. And here's the catch. And Jesus never touched her, never laid hands. I speak with all the apostolic authority to those of you that can hear my voice literally from all four corners of the earth that as I stand before you this morning, I am now sending the word to your house. Whoever is in your house that is dealing with sickness, disease, issues of discomfort, I am telling you, don't wait for the pastor to get there. Don't wait for the revival. Don't wait for the bishop. I'm telling you, the word is now going forth, and healing is getting ready to come into your house. I know this is contrary to how it is that we ordinarily function, how it is that we ordinarily operate, but I need you to know in this hour that the word is now headed in your direction. To safeguard your privacy, I just want you to put your zip code right on the screen now because I believe that a host of heavenly angels are en route to your home to move and abate every strand of sickness that was aimed to get there. Jesus did it, and he did it without touching. I remember when it is that there were uh, ten leprous men. The ten leprous men were banned, and they were forbidden from coming into church. They lived in colonies outside of town. They, according to Leviticus, if they sat in a chair, a chair had to be thrown out. Laid in a mattress, had to be left outside for six weeks. These lepers had the whole issue that if they scratched their head, patches of hair would fall out. While it is that they were walking, one of their toes could fall off. Their skin was disintegrating. And when it is that they saw somebody who was not, in fact, inflicted with this leprosy, they had to yell out, unclean. Jesus is walking on this day, 
And 10 people who are on the outskirts start walking up towards them. And Jesus does something that is so amazing to me. He never asked for a vial of oil. He never asked them to lift up their hands. Jesus, because he is our pure priest, never laid hands on them. He gave them the direction. And the direction he gave them is as you go, you will be made whole. Say, go show yourself to the priest. I'm telling you, before it is that you find yourself back in physical church again, every issue that is falling apart, every problem that causes you consternation, every obstacle that you haven't been able to hurdle, God said, before you get back to church, you're going to find yourself healed. Nine of them made the mistake that I don't want you to make. Nine of them went on. Only one came back to say thank you. I wonder right where it is that you are in that apartment, in that townhouse, in that condominium, in that rancher. I wonder if today you can just thank him for the healing that hadn't happened yet, for the breakthrough that has not yet arrived for what it is that God is getting ready to do in your midst and in your presence. Will you thank him? Here it is, that you trust God to change your situation without touching you. And so now we've been out of church for 17 weeks. And many of us are, are really calling in the question some of the hymns that we used to sing. He touched me. Something happened, and all the joy that floods my soul, and I'm believing by faith that even under the backdrop of the canopy of COVID-19, that God is getting ready to introduce an adjustment to the church. And the adjustment to the church, I know many of you are going to be upset and bristled by it, but I think it appropriate to introduce it. God is getting ready to introduce to the 21st century church healing without touch. God is getting ready to get you straight, getting ready to get you restored, getting ready to get you delivered without anybody laying hands on you. The Bible says through one of the epistles, don't lay hands on people too speedily. You got to take your time all the more. You got to be careful of who you let lay hands on you. I've got to ask you a question. I hope you'll allow me to think out loud. Is if Jesus was able to perform this level of healing, could he only do it just with men? I'm glad you asked. There was a frustrated mother who came to Jesus, and this frustrated mother who came to Jesus said, something is wrong with my daughter. And Jesus rebuked her and says, I didn't come to give what I have to dogs. And that mother responded, but even the dogs can eat the crumbs that fall from the master's table. And Jesus responded, because of your faith, she is now healed. He never saw her. Can I go a step further? He never even asked her name. He said, as of this moment, the family member you've been concerned about is completely healed. There's a family member who you are in angst about. There's a family member who gives you stress and gives you pause because you want to make sure that they're all right. Can I remind you that in this text, the girl never asked Jesus. The girl is the recipient of the friends and family program. She got the blessing, I hope you'll receive it, because of somebody else's petition. And I'm believing somebody else is going to get a breakthrough because of how you ask God. And because of how you believed God. And immediately they were healed. What kind of faith do you have? Do you have the kind of faith that immediately a family member can get healed of dementia? Immediately thyroids will shrink up. Immediately 
tumors will disappear. Immediately, blood pressure is coming back down. Immediately, autism is being reversed. Immediately, alcoholism is taking off the tongue. Can you trust God for an immediate miracle with no touch? The question that begs us asking and arguing is, can Jesus just do it? And I want to remind you here that we are joint heirs. And because we're joint heirs, I need you to journey with me to a touch-free zone. And the touch-free zone is in Acts chapter 5. Acts chapter 5 is amazing because Acts in and unto itself is an abbreviation for Acts of the Holy Ghost. Acts of the Holy Spirit. And we just know it as Acts. Because the Holy Ghost don't do a whole lot of talking. He just functions in his gift, functions in his authority, and functions in his assignment. The 21st century church has too many epistles, too many words of wisdom, and not enough acts. God is waiting for us to demonstrate his power, for us to model what it is that he does through grace. And amazingly, friends, in Acts chapter 5, the apostles' strength begins to increase. And when their strength begins to increase, they begin to see signs and wonders follow. I am believing, and I want you to hallmark this moment, that the church post-COVID is going to have to do more than singing, preaching, and shouting. But there must be demonstration of the Holy Spirit. There must be evidence and signs and wonders that follow. And they begin to flow in the gift of the Holy Spirit in Acts chapter 5. And the demand became so much that it was physically impossible for the apostles to lay hands on all of them. It wasn't enough olive oil in the vat for them to do lines. They couldn't just keep up at that pace. And so they made up in their minds as a strategy of innovation. They said, just lay all the people out in the street, put them on mattresses, and something amazing happens. It says, when Peter walks down the street, when his shadow falls, whoever is in that bed, no matter what their condition, their circumstance, no matter what their diagnosis is, they shall be healed from all of it. And the Bible says that Peter started walking down Main Street. And when he starts walking down Main Street, immediately healing takes place. What an amazing, what an amazing testimony. What an amazing tribute. That countless numbers found themselves healed without anybody laying hands. I, um, I don't know whether you know it or not, but something happened significantly beginning on February 5th, 1812. February 5th, 1812 is when it is that Americans, when it is that Canadians celebrate Groundhog's Day. It is, in fact, the mythical conviction and agreement. It is the cultural exploitation that a rodent that is asleep will wake up, stick out its head, and if it sees its shadow, then winter will go on for a longer six weeks. I came on this day, the last Sunday in July, just to tell you, I can't wait for Groundhog's Day, for the season to change. I can't wait for February for God to do something significant and striking. I can't put my fate and my destiny in the hands of some rodent to dictate to me how long the coldest season of my life is going to be. But God told me to tell you, on this day, if you can hear my voice, and I hope your faith will lend you the elasticity to try it. God said, the next time you see your shadow, take it as an indication that your season just changed. The next six weeks of your life will not be like the last six weeks of your life. 
because the season just changed. Don't wait on a rat. Don't wait on a termite. Don't wait on a squirrel. Wait on the precious Holy Ghost. That when you see the shadow, know something is getting ready to change. Pastor, what is a shadow? The shadow is something that disrupts the light. And I need you to understand whenever you see darkness trying to interrupt the light that is in your life, it is confirmation your winter is getting ready to end. Whenever it is that the enemy does something to darken your path, the cold season is getting ready to come to an end. I'm thankful unto God that God is getting ready to shift some things. And only 500 of you will receive it. He's going to shift it without touching you. Because the wind is getting ready to blow in your direction. Have you ever had a moment with God where you didn't need a third party person to lay hands on you? But sitting in your car, you felt God moving. Standing in your own home, you felt God moving. God said, don't wait on Groundhog's Day. The shadow is coming. And when you look at the shadow, I need you to notice this. The shadow is never in front of you. The shadow is always behind you. Forgetting those things which are behind, I got to press towards the mark. Thank you, Holy God for giving me a moment of seeing it won't always be like this. But sooner or later, it's getting ready to work in my favor. It's turning around for me. God, I feel in my bone, it's my season now. Because I've suffered with him, I now got to reign with him. I got to ask you a question because for the last 17 weeks, so many of you have been in lines of cars waiting for COVID tests. But you never got the diagnosis to know whether or not you're dealing with a touch deprivation. All you need is one touch from God. And God says, I'm going to touch you without touching you. I'm going to give you evidence that I'm with you. I'm going to give you clarity that you are on the right road. I'm going to give you confirmation your prayers are being worked on in this moment. If there's somebody in the house with you, I just need you to move to them and touch them. I don't care if you got to rub their shoulder, hold their hand. I don't care if you just got to hug them and embrace them. But God says, I'm getting ready to heal those. I know we do lines for those who, who deal with cancer. We do lines and prayer calls for those who are dealing with addiction. But in all my years in church, I've never heard anybody call out for the comforter for those who have not been touched, for those who have not been held, for those who are feeling like you're all by your lonesome. God said, I'm sending the Holy Spirit just to become resident with you in this moment. I don't have to worry because I'm never alone. He promised never to leave me, never to leave me alone. I want to pray for you and not just you. I want to pray for those of you, hear me, who are living by yourselves. I'm praying today for those of you, hear this, who are living alone, here's the catch, in a house full of people. I'm praying for those of you who are isolated with company. I'm praying for those of you who feel like you're on your own designated island of Patmos because nobody checks on you and you don't know whether you're in the body or out of the body. And God is saying, this is your season to adjust. Hear this, that you can get fulfilled without being touched. That you'll see, feel valuable without anybody extending a hand. That you'll know your worth even while you are in solitude. Touch right now, God. Move right now, God. Hover right now. I break the spell of loneliness. I break the spell of isolation. I break the spirit of rejection. God, I plead with you that in this hour, you'll make the phone ring. You'll send a text alert. You'll make the doorbell ring. You'll send a knock on the door. Let them know that goodness and mercy are running up right behind them. And I thank you for it. Those of you who are feeling by yourself because you don't have a church home, 
you don't feel like you are in good company. I want you to connect with us here at New Birth. I want to be your pastor. I want Jesus to be your Lord. I want New Birth to be your church. I want heaven to be your home. Those of you, this has been a damnable time having to make it by yourself with no support, with no encouragement, with no circle, with no fans. Here it is, with no affirmation. But you still pull yourself together every day. You're going to make it. Come on, it takes one to know one. The reality is anybody who has anointed has had to go through a lonely season. Anybody who has a call on their life has had to go through a season where they didn't have anything. That great general of a civil rights activist who just gone on to be with the Lord, John Lewis, was arrested 46 times. Everybody shows pictures of him coming across the bridge, but there are no pictures of him in the Selma jail. I'm telling you, when you go through the most harrowing moment of your life, there's nobody there but you and God. And you've got to know how to adjust to God touching you in a different kind of way. It's taken me, i got to be transparent, it's been an adjustment for me personally to adjust to preaching to you and you not being here. I wish that you were here, but I'm so glad that you're right there. And I'm believing that God has built a bridge so that we can still connect. I need you to help me. Help me do ministry in this novel and innovative way. All of the tithers, all of you who are sowers, all of those of you who are givers, I want you to sow right now. And I want you to sow out of the remembrance of when you had a need but had nobody to ask. I need you to sow right now with the reflection of how it is that you had to suffer in silence, of how it is that you had to be your own life coach. You had to talk yourself off the ledge even though you had no intention of jumping. I want you to sow in even right now. Every tither, every giver, I need you to give a gift. You don't know how it's going to rescue somebody by themselves, how it's going to parachute into the life of somebody who's scratching and surviving. I need you to give that gift. Every tithe, I'm compelling you. I'm calling you right now. I don't want to give by myself. I'm telling you, the triune God, understand that even though I got all power, I want a legion of angels around me. James Weldon Johnson in his creation narrative said that even God got lonely and said, I'll create me a man. Many of us mess up in our loneliness and we try to make somebody who God never created for us. I want you to sow that seed. I want you to give a gift. I want to challenge you because I believe your season is getting ready to change, that God's getting ready to do something different. The winter of your life will not go on for the next six weeks. It's springtime in Camelot. Everything is getting ready to change. You ain't got to wait till Groundhog's Day. But it's a new season. It's a new day. A fresh anointing is coming your way. It's a season of power, a season of prosperity. I got good news. It's already here. Stay tuned. Watch God change your season. And if you don't remember anything else, I'm challenging you to start looking for your shadow. Because as soon as you see your shadow, the season of your life is getting ready to change. Hello, family and friends. This is Pastor Kylie Slimmons. And I know that while you were listening to that word, you wanted to touch your neighbor. But I'm sure that even though you couldn't do that, the word of God touched your heart. Listen. I pray in this moment that if you need prayer, if you need to give your life to Jesus Christ, if you need to recommit, if you the desire the gift of the Holy Spirit with the evidence of speaking in tongues, I want you to look at the link below so that we can give you instructions on how to connect and how to begin your journey with Jesus Christ. And maybe that word touched you in such a way that you want to give because you see all that we're doing, all that is happening, how we're trying to make a difference. Why don't you text NBGIVE to 77977. On the behalf of our senior pastor, Dr. Jamal Harrison Bryant, thanks for being a part of this experience. Listen, stay tuned, stay connected, get involved, and let's make a difference together.
We'll see you soon. God bless.